you see this mask right here? You see this mask? This mask means something. It means that it is no more, people. The man behind the mask has been revealed. Fanboy mode to the max right now. You see this mask? It means nothing no more. It means absolutely nothing. $5.99, fanboy mode up. I am super hyped. By the way, spoilerific review. If you don't want to be spoiled, I recommend you have read this chapter because I'm going to basically just lay it out for you. I think we deserve an award right now, us Obito theorists. I think we deserve an award because at the end of this chapter, we get the identity and the mask comes off and it is Obito's face, but with uh, like, it's, it looks old or whatever on, on one side, but that's because, you know, all the rubble fell on him. Man, there's not even much really you could say about this chapter because the, the interesting thing about the chapter, I guess you could say, is that aside, of course, from the, you know, revelation at the end is the way it was formatted because it's no dialogue for the entire chapter up until the end. And I was just like, wow, because, you know, I'm, I'm going through each page and each page, and I'm like, you know, wh where's the dialogue? Where's, you know, the talking? But it was a flashback of Obito's past, and I was just like, oh, man, this is so interesting to see. First of all, you got uh, uh, Obito and Guy. I never knew if they had met previously before. You know, this was never explained if they knew each other and whatnot, but I was just so excited to see that, see Obito fight in the tuning exams. Everything about it was just awesome, and see the rise of Kakashi when he was a kid up to uh, joning level. I was just like, oh, man, it was done so well. Kishimoto did the little flashback so well, and then he didn't tease us because there was spoilers saying, oh, we gotta wait another week, but the spoilers were incorrect. We got the face at the end, and it's apparently Obito. For those that missed out on my bajillion theories about Obito, I will quickly give you why it can be Obito and why this doesn't add a million plot holes. Very simple. The real Madara Uchiha found Obito, probably rescued, who knows, maybe uh, after the rubble fell on him and all that, all those other rocks fell, maybe that was, uh, they were on the again dupes or something by the real Madara. Madara rescued Obito, left with Obito, right? Uh, you know, he trained him to think like him, you know, we need to save this world. Uh, he even got probably corrupt by, um, I guess, K Rin dying and Kakashi not, you know, fulfilling his promise. Uh, somewhere along the lines, Madara puts on the mask, the real Madara, fights Minato because probably he thinks, you know, Minato could change this guy. Uh, he was the one who fought him. He was a part of the Uchiha massacre. And then somewhere along the lines, Madara dies. He uh, entrusts uh, Obito to bring him back using um, Yahiko's Renigan, and uh, not Yahiko's Renigan, Yahiko's, um, move, you know, that, that thing that he used to revive everyone, and from the moment we've seen Obito or Toby in the series, it's been Obito. That's my theory, and that's where the plot holes pretty much all cease to exist. Crazy chapter, because there's no dialogue, you can't, there's not much to critique, it was awesome to see the flashback, and just that final panel of, uh, Obito's face with the damaged side. It all makes sense if you really look at it closely. Um, I I'm just baffled. It's like, I, I didn't expect that because I read the spoilers earlier today. They, they, they came out real early and I was like, oh, not another week. But we got a face. We got a face and somewhat of a name because they're throwing Obito around and we got a flashback of Obito. So it seemingly is indeed him. I would like to thank everyone who believed in my Obito theories. Now, let me stop. Let me stop. But seriously, crazy stuff. We finally got what we wanted. Um, and let the theories continue because just because that's Obito's face doesn't mean that that's his consciousness. You know, we still got all the things with the Zetsu arm, how it melted off and everything. We still got a lot more to cover, but either way, this just leaves more opportunities for the future for what might happen next because it's just like, this was crazy. I can't wait to see more. Let me know what is your reaction right now after reading this chapter or not even reading, basically just looking at the pictures of this chapter because there was no really dialogue to be read. Um, it was just crazy stuff. I'm, I'm just really happy that us Obito theory, a theorists were somewhat right. You know, even if that isn't him controlling his body, if the little kid died that day and it's, you know, a, a Zetsu controlling him, we were still right. Uh, that's all I have for this quick review, I guess. All, all I can really say about the chapter is it was nice that it was something very original because a, a chapter without dialogue is rarely done. And if it is done, it's never really usually correct. And this was done very well. We got new information of, okay, so this is why Obito knew Guy. This, you know, it showed Kakashi rising up to Joni level. Everything added up together. Uh, I'm Fenella World. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Thumbs up for Obito because we were right. And have an awesome day, people.